Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another episode on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to generate dynamically our custom post types thanks to the custom settings or the settings API. Basically, we're gonna code the custom post type manager page to have the ability to add as many custom post types we want and automatically every single custom post type that we saved in our custom options will be generated in the sidebar based on the options that we specified. In the previous lesson I asked you to do a little bit of homework, basically I asked you to add the full list of options that a custom post type needs and if you don't want to do it because it's a really long list as you can see here, I already did it and I uploaded this code, this final code in the previous lesson. So in lesson 25, you can uh, grab this custom post type controller and replace it with your own. And you're gonna have the full list here. Basically, I'm putting this array as a placeholder in order for me to use it later with all the options available for a custom post type. And then down here in the register custom post types, I'm looping, registering the post type, I'm looping all those single options in uh, the way that WordPress needs it. So inside the label as an array, and then all the other options for the custom post type. So we have everything that we need. Now we need to actually save the data in the database and store this data dynamically inside this multidimensional array. So let's do it. What we have to do, basically, we have to do exactly what we're doing in our dashboard pages. Here in our dashboard pages, we are um, calling the settings API and the callbacks, of course, in order to generate some custom options, some custom settings, in our case, the Alicat plugin, and store a bunch of custom sections and custom fields in that custom option. We have to do exactly the same, but generate some custom options for the handling of the custom post types. So let's do it. Let's go back in our custom post type controller. And here in the custom post type controller, we are already using the settings API, but we didn't specify the publicly accessible variable. So let's do it. Dollar settings just to be uh, precise and accurate. I forgot in the past lesson, I'm so sorry. But here we have the settings and then we have the callbacks with the admin callbacks that we're using to print the administration custom post type page. We need a new type of callbacks because we want to manage those callbacks just for the custom post type. So let's create a new file here called uh, cpt callbacks.php. And in the custom post type callbacks, we can basically copy the manager callbacks, but edit a bunch of things out. So just copy paste in here. Let's replace the name from manager callbacks to CPD callbacks. We don't need to extend the base controller because we don't want to tap the list of managers that we define in the base controller. So we can remove the sanitization here. We can rename this uh, CPT section here because we're going to use it. And we can rename the description of this section something like manage your custom post types. Something Something like that really really straightforward and here we can uh, let's just comment this out because I'm gonna reuse a lot of this code but I don't want to generate a checkbox I want to generate multiple other things and then we have the class the base controller we don't need to use the base controller in this class anymore that's perfect it's here so here we can define another publicly accessible variable called cpt underscore callbacks and let's define it, of course. Let's duplicate this thing and say, hey, the cpt underscore callbacks needs to call the cpt callbacks. And the cpt callbacks should be called here. So let's use the ink API callbacks cpt callbacks to say, hey, include also this package that we need. And in order to maintain everything in a proper fashion order from smaller to bigger, let's put the cpt callbacks because it's shorter before the admin callbacks just to maintain a good cascading visual effect. That's great. Now we have the settings we're already generating here in the settings we are adding the sub page. What we have to do, we have to define the same things that we're defining in the dashboard. We have to define some settings, sections and fields. So let's do it. Let's copy all this stuff. Let's paste it in the custom post type controller. Uh, let's say just before storing the custom post types. We want to do this. So let's define the 
set settings, set sections and set fields. And as you can see here, I'm maintaining the same names that I'm using in the dashboard because these two classes are completely separated with each other and we're not gonna interfere. We cannot interfere with a method that it's already declared because it, the class itself contained, I'm not extending the dashboard class and I'm not gonna have any issue. I can maintain everything like that. Let's go into set settings and let's check what we have here. Let's copy this method and let's paste it in a custom post type controller. And as you can see, I'm just basically copy pasting everything that I need to use because I'm super lazy and I don't wanna reset or rewrite everything every time. So it's gonna be like pretty, pretty standard. The option group should be Alicad plugin CPT underscore settings, just to be sure. The option name should be Alicat plugin underscore CPT. And for the callbacks, let's rename these to the CPT underscore callbacks. And here let's say CPT sanitize. Even if this is gonna be super complicated, let's just generate this function so we're not gonna have a PHP error. So in the CPT callbacks, let's create a public function called CPT sanitize. And the CPT sanitize will receive a lot of inputs, but let's just like write input and uh, let's just return the input just to not interrupt the execution of the script, but we're gonna sanitize and take care of sanitizing later because we have to sanitize a lot of things. It's gonna be pretty intense, but let's continue. So we set the settings, we're registering set the settings with our arguments, then we can set the section. So let's check the dashboard, what we're doing for the section here. We're defining the section manager here. So let's go back in the custom post type controller and after the settings, let's set the section and here I want to generate the ID to be alicad instead of admin CPT index and uh, here set instead of the title settings manager let's say uh, custom post type manager the callback will be again the CPT callbacks and say that CPT section manager and the page is actually Mm -mm, not Alicat plugin. I don't remember the page. So let's go back in the, how am I defining this page? What the name of this page sets a page, uh, Alicat CPT. That's the menu slug of the sub page that I'm generating It's the menu slug of the CPT manager. And you can see it also in the URL here, page equal Alicat CPT. That's the name of the page that we need to define here in the settings of the section, Alicat CPT. Awesome. Let's remember to define the CPT section manager that is gonna be basically this one, CPT section manager, right? Manage your custom post types or actually create as many custom post types as you want, something like that. Morale is so good, hey? I'm so good at writing instructions, but yeah, it's not the best, but let's continue. We set the sections and we're passing because we copied everything from the dashboard. We're passing the set section to the settings and we have our custom arguments. Awesome. No, now we need to set all the fields and this is gonna be pretty intense. Let's go back in the dashboard and let's check set the fields. Okay, perfect. Let's go back in a custom post type controller and let's paste the meta here, set the fields and it set the fields uh, we cannot do a for each in here because it's not what that's not what we need we need to copy this list of fields here remove the for each and just paste the full array inside these already opened array because this is a multi-dimensional array and we need to generate as many fields as we need so the id of this field Basically, what we have to do, we need to generate an each unique field for every option of our custom post types. And that's gonna be pretty intense. We have the post types, name, singular name, all this bunch of things. But the majority of these are just repeated fields. So for now, we're gonna just define some default fields that we need in order to activate the custom post type. And later, maybe in other tutorials, we're gonna just define all these fields, but these are too much. It's just like kind of insane. So let's define the post type the name, the singular name, and then we want to define if it's public, has archive. Let's leave it like that. First define the key is post type. 
and the title should be custom post type ID. The callback should go to the CPT callbacks and then this one should be a text field. Perfect. The page is alicad CPT and the section is the section that we defined before. It's not the admin index but is the alicad CPT index and then the option name is the option name here alicad plugin CPT. The label for is the post type here and we don't need to pass the cat the class UI toggle actually we don't need to pass any class because we're not gonna deal with that shenanigan and here let's remember to generate a CPT callbacks called text field so let's go into CPT callbacks method let's generate a public function called text field and of course here we're gonna get the full list of arguments and let's remember to keep it consistent and go on another line and here we can just for now just return the input whatever let's just leave a comment here so we're gonna remember we're not gonna do it now because we have a lot of things to do still aren't you worried about your privacy while browsing online if you asked yourself that question at least once you absolutely need a vpn and NordVPN is one of the best one you can get. NordVPN comes with military-grade encryption, security against intrusive ads and malicious attacks, and the ability to activate a double encryption for extra privacy. It's available pretty much for every platform, coming with a standalone app for Windows and Mac, Linux setup guide, native mobile apps, and an official Chrome extension. I've been using it for almost two years and I have nothing to complain. Check the link in the description below to access the currently available discounted subscription offer. Take back control over your internet browsing with NordVPN. Perfect, now that we have the post type, let's continue by adding all the basic necessary inputs that we need in order to generate the custom post type. And as I said, I wanna just generate a bunch of things. Let's write a comment, otherwise we're gonna forget. So we wanted to set the post type ID that we just created as a post type, that's perfect. Then we wanna set the singular name, then the plural name, then the public checkbox and then the has archive checkbox. And as I said, these are just few arguments of the massive amount of list of arguments in order to generate a custom post type. But we can uh, pretty much deal with all these arguments by just passing these few parameters and then uh, automatically fill up everything else. So let's extend this multidimensional array with each single one of these parameters. So we did the post type, perfect, we can delete it then let's do the singular name. So let's duplicate this thing, put a comma of course and paste it here and change with singular underscore name. And then let's say singular name, the array custom post type, this is a still a text field. So we're gonna leave it like that. Same page, same section. We need to change this instead of the label is the singular name instead of the post type. Perfect, let's duplicate again another time this array. And we did the post type, we did the singular name, let's do the plural name. So we can just copy these and we have the singular, let's check the singular again and singular again and replace it with plural. And this is uppercase, perfect. And let's duplicate once again this one instead of Plural name, we need public and has archived. These are two checkboxes. So we can change these to public and we can use the title public, but of course you can write whatever you want. You can also write a question like, is this public? Something like that with question mark, but having a public is more consistent with the way the custom post type always handled this thing. So let's just leave it as public. Uh, everything else is okay. Here's the callback shouldn't be a text field, but should be a checkbox field. And let's remember, of course, to generate this method in our CPT callbacks function or CPT callbacks class by reactivating the checkbox field that we had before. Of course, because we are using the custom UI toggle here, we need to pass a class as a parameter, as an argument. So let's do that again. Let's actually access the dashboard and let's copy this class declaration UI toggle because 
that's what we need in order to activate the UI toggle for the checkbox field. Everything is generated thanks to that uh, unique class. So let's duplicate once again for the last time this. Let's replace the public with has archive and this we can just have it has archive and let's just leave it checkbox field as well. So that's perfect. Now we have the full list and remember to save this file of course. Now we have the full list of all the basic options that we need, all the basic fields that we need in order to generate a custom post type. The post type ID, singular, plural name, the public and has archive. So just these five things, pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Let's fill up a little bit the text field with a really simple text field because we want to fill it up with a text field, right? It's going to be like really, really easy and really simple. So this episode 26 is a particularly long lesson because we are dealing with a lot of options and a lot of coding and a, a bunch of different things that we need to tackle slowly. So I decided to split this episode in a couple of parts, two, three parts. I don't know. I haven't finished the episode yet, so I have to interrupt it, especially because some of you guys asked to not make my tutorials too long because it are hard to download or like to stream on a slow connection for some specific parts of the world. So I decided to cut this video and I'm gonna release the next part of the video later the next day. I'm so sorry if I'm uh, interrupting the flow but it's better to not overwhelm you too much with one hour long tutorial. So it's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can check the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson as usual happy coding.